I read all 12 NMN human studies to figure out if there are any proven benefits and whether we should use NMN supplements. This took many hours of work, but it was so worth it. I found three key takeaways. Plus, at the end of the video, there's one study that ties everything together. Let's start the journey. I searched PubMed, Scopus, and Medline for NMN clinical trials, and I found 12. The first was published in February 2020, and it gave NMN once to 10 healthy men, just to make sure that there were no significant significant side effects from taking any men, and there weren't. Now don't worry, the three key takeaways are coming up shortly. The next study was published in June 2021, titled Nicotinamide Mononucleotide Increases Muscle Insulin Sensitivity in Pre-Diabetic Women, which is a very intriguing title. The theory goes that diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and even the aging process can stress our metabolism, and a molecule called NAD, which is central to our metabolism, is used up. That's when the damage starts to occur. So if we can support our NAD levels by taking NMN, we can prevent this damage from happening. That's the theory anyway. So coming back to the second study, they took 25 postmenopausal women with pre-diabetes. 12 were given the placebo and 13 were given NMN at a dose of 250 milligrams per day. They found that while the blood NAD goes up, the muscle NAD doesn't, and that's the first key takeaway. The entire theory of supplementing with NMN is to boost NAD, but if NAD doesn't increase in our muscles, that's a big red flag to this entire theory. These troubling findings match up with other studies looking at a different molecule called nicotinamide riboside. That study also showed that nicotinamide riboside supplements do not increase muscle NAD. Furthermore, we've got good human research showing that older adults who exercise, they've got roughly the same amount of NAD in their muscles compared to younger adults. The crucial thing is that you have to exercise because older adults who don't exercise, that's when the muscle NAD levels start to drop off. Coming back again to the second NMN study, there were no differences in body composition, HbA1c, sugar levels, or insulin. The only finding that was apparent was an improvement in muscle insulin sensitivity. But that signal is a bit difficult to interpret, because the NMN group, they're slightly healthier, as evidenced by the lower triglyceride levels in their livers. There was no increase in muscle NAD, and the study is very small. So we'll mark muscle insulin sensitivity as a possibility, although not particularly convincing. The third NMN study is the first one to look at strength and fitness. It combined exercise with varying doses of NMN, up to 1,200 milligrams per day. And while there was a small improvement in power at the first ventilatory threshold, overall there were no differences in VO2 max, work rate, or peak power after six weeks of treatment. NMN also did not alter body mass, free fat mass, it had no effect on grip strength, push-ups, or sit and reach tests. Which is a really disappointing finding. After all of the hype with NMN, you'd expect to see robust improvements in exercise performance, but that's not what that study found. The fourth study looked at sleep and fatigue, but unfortunately there were no significant improvements when compared to placebo on sleep quality or fatigue. What was happening in this study is that all groups, including the placebo group, were improving both in their sleep quality and fatigue scores. It was the same with grip strength and walking. The fifth study was another safety study and any men passed with flying colours. The next, published in May of 2022, was the first study to look at well-being. It again confirmed increases in blood NAD, but there were no improvements in walking endurance or measures of insulin sensitivity. And when it came to the well-being scores, there were no differences between the placebo group or the NMN group. Which is odd because after all of the hype with NMN, particularly on social media, you'd expect to see robust improvements in your well-being scores, as in how well you're feeling, by taking NMN. But that's not what the study showed. There was no differences between the placebo group or the NMN group. And I think what's likely happening is that social media influencers, when they start taking NMN, they're starting to improve their diet, their exercise, they're prioritizing their sleep, and that's the reason why they can feel these improvements in their body. It's probably got nothing to do with NMN, simply the other lifestyle choices that they're making. We're coming up to the second out of the three takeaways. So this next study, it was also a safety study, but it looked at other things, such as diabetes markers and cholesterol. While it found that NMN was safe, there was no improvements in HbA1c, which is one of the big markers of diabetes management. There was also no improvements in glucose or insulin, plus there were no improvements in cholesterol levels. 
So that's the second takeaway. NMN supplements from the current research that we've got so far do not appear to improve body composition, blood pressure, cholesterol, HbA1c or glucose levels. Study number 8 on the list is incredibly controversial. It was published in December 2022. It again confirmed increases in blood NAD and there were no safety issues, but this study found significant improvements in walking distances by taking NMN. But when this study came out, the results were heavily criticised. So this study it used middle-aged adults, but these adults they had such a slow walking pace to the point where they may as well have been 80 year olds. They were incredibly frail and that's why these results were struck down by other researchers such as Professor Matt Caberline. So this study essentially it was put to one side because we don't know how to interpret these results. Number 9 out of the 12 studies also looked at exercise performance and this one it did appear to show improvements in walking speed and grip strength which the study stated should be validated in larger trials. So on our table we'll mark walking speed and grip strength improvements as yes. However, there were no improvements in body composition, in hearing, blood pressure or flow mediated dilation. There were also no improvements in overall cognitive function. But just as we had one trial showing improvements in walking speed and grip strength, the next study showed no improvements. Which brings me to the third takeaway. From the results that we've got so far, the evidence is mixed for whether any men can improve muscle performance. Most of the studies show no effect, and this fits with the first takeaway. Remember, any men doesn't appear to boost muscle NAD, so it's unlikely that any men supplements will improve muscle performance. There is another takeaway that I want to go through, plus we'll go through a troubling finding in the final trial. The 11th study looked at arterial stiffness. While there was a trend towards improvement, there were no significant differences between the NMN or placebo groups, which matches the finding from the 9th study, where there were no changes in flow-mediated dilation. And the final study was published this month, August 2023, and there was a troubling finding. Once again, there were no improvements in body weight or body composition. But here's the troubling thing. There were significant increases in insulin levels after eating when the participants took NMN. And matching the other studies, there were no improvements in cholesterol levels, HbA1c or glucose. Let's summarise what we've found. From the short term 12 studies that we've got, NMN does appear to be safe and it does boost blood NAD levels. However, there are no improvements in muscle NAD. There's also no improvements in body composition, blood pressure, cholesterol, HbA1c or insulin levels. There may even be an increase in insulin levels, which is not what we want. There's a possibility of improved insulin sensitivity. However, two out of the three studies showed no improvements. There's also no improvement in VO2 max. It's unlikely that there would be an improvement in grip strength or walking speed. There's no improvements in sleep, fatigue, well-being, hearing, cognition or arterial stiffness. So looking at this, the NMN human studies have been overwhelmingly disappointing, especially when you consider all of the hype on social media. Like I mentioned earlier, the social media influencers who are singing the praises of NMN, they're probably just reaping the benefits of a better diet, exercise and sleep. What they're likely experiencing is the placebo effect, and that's exactly why we do these studies, to make sure that it's not just a placebo effect that we're experiencing, and so far there doesn't appear to be any further benefits beyond that placebo effect. And that makes sense. If any men isn't boosting muscle NAD, then how could it possibly be improving exercise performance? And here's the study that ties everything together. It's highly likely that any men and NR supplements, they are broken down by our gut microbiome. They are not directly absorbed, and even the small amount that is absorbed and reaches our bloodstream, it's quickly broken down by our liver. At the end of the day, it's your health, your decision. You can absolutely choose to buy any men supplements. Just know that the research that we've got so far is not particularly encouraging. It's far better to focus on a great diet, regular exercise and high quality sleep. There are some supplements that I do sing the praises of, such as creatine because of the strong evidence base. So make sure to check out this next video here that goes through all of the research on creatine. And if you want early access to these videos, make sure to check out the pinned comment where you can find a link to my Patreon.